You will get the most from any Systems to Win video when you launch it from its video home page. Before you begin using your standard work template, you should first become familiar with all of the many types of standard work templates that are available to you. And there's another video for that. Do you want to measure, analyze, improve, and control your process, or just document it? If you just want to document it, there are different levels of detail for training a new hire versus auditing an already trained worker. There are different levels of detail for an ISO 9000 or FDA controlled process versus instructor notes for one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face training. You can use your tool selection matrix to choose the right tool for what you are trying to accomplish. And then if you decide that the standard work combination sheet is the right tool, then you can begin to use this online training and series of videos to learn how to use it. And before using any Systems to Win template, you should complete the Quick Start Initial Training that teaches you how to find help and how to use features that are common to every Systems to Win template. Now, if you are using a trial version, then your template will not yet have been personalized. So you're going to need to imagine that your competent, supportive leaders have already personalized your master template so that these header fields at the top of the page provide the information that makes sense for your unique company and industry. So that these favorite shapes at the top of the page and or these standard shapes that are always available from any Systems to Win template provide your users with those unique shapes and icons that are most valuable for your unique company and industry. And your leaders might have personalized your drop-down lists. For instance, your drop-down list for frequency codes might include first and last part, or every third batch, or anything that happens on a regular cycle in your environment. Or your drop-down list for category codes might have your user-defined codes for any way that you want to use Excel's powerful filtering capabilities to analyze your process. Maybe different types of setups, different standard cost codes. It's your process. And like every Systems to Win template, the personalizations that your leaders make to the master template will be automatically found and transferred. Every time you upgrade, your template becomes more and more your own. And you can always personalize your own working document. Now the last few things that you should know before getting started is if English is not your native language, then you should learn how to easily switch between languages. And if you suspect that there might be a few things that you don't know about Excel, you might greatly benefit from taking a few minutes to study our online training for how to use Excel itself before trying to learn how to use an add-in to Excel like this one. So with that preparation, you should now be ready to begin to learn how to use this powerful tool that does nine things in one that you couldn't possibly do with just a pencil and a paper. And by the way, if the consultant that you're paying $1,000 a day comes out with some cheesy line that the only tools that you need to do process improvement are a pencil and a paper, then you might want to have them watch this series of videos because that might be true for some really simple lean tools and methods, but it's certainly not true for standard work. So let's get started. In our online training page, let's use the table of contents to go to this next section for default data and units of measure, where it tells us that the very first thing that we need to do is define our cycle time unit of measure, and that is defined in the instructions section of the help sheet. So in Excel, we have our standard work template opened to the help worksheet. And then we use our page navigation to take us to the instructions section on this help worksheet. And then in this pink double border field in the cycle time unit of measures section, we open the drop down list and then we either leave it with the default seconds or if we change it to minutes or hours, 
then we need to manually recalculate the entire workbook using Control shift alt f9 now your cycle time unit of measure is the only unit of measure that's defined for the entire work book not per sheet and that's why it's the only unit of measure that you define on the help worksheet all other defaults are defined in the pink cells near the bottom of the standard worksheet so back in Excel let's click the tab for the standard worksheet and then we need to scroll way down below the primary data entry area where we find this bottom section where we will find these pink double border cells where we will enter our default units of measure and some default data so the first pink cell is the unit of measure for your work time available notice that it's usually a shift that you're trying to analyze if we click the header to get pop-up help we see the instruction that if it's not a shift then you can override the VLOOKUP formula with your preferred unit of measure so let's do that let's select the pink cell and notice that in the formula bar there's a VLOOKUP now if you know how to use VLOOKUPs to do your own personalized language translations you can but it's also okay to simply overwrite the formula with your preferred unit of measure and as soon as you hit enter notice that all kinds of things changed this entire worksheet is now analyzing everything based upon your preferred work time unit of measure rather than per shift so the next pink cell is hours per day or hours per shift so let's click that header to see the pop-up help and that tells us to enter the total working hours for our work time available unit of measure in this case shift uh, if this was nursing it might be 12 hours per shift and it tells us that meal times are usually excluded from this starting number and if English is not your native language then remember you can always scroll up and follow the link to the online training where anything that's in pop-up help is usually duplicated in the online help but now it's in a format that you can copy the URL for that training page and then in another browser window open Google Translate and paste that URL select any language that you want and then click the button to translate and scroll back down to see any systems to win help translated into any language so the pop-up help for the next pink field says we should enter the default number of break minutes per shift and it reminds us that meals should have already been deducted so don't double deduct them here and the pop-up help for the next pink field says that this is where you can actually enter other unavailable time for things like meetings or trainings or routine maintenance and because six months later it's often very difficult to remember how did we come up with that number this is a good time to remind you that every systems to win template has a custom formula safe zone you can click this link which takes you to a custom formula zone which is your playpen it's a safe place on the worksheet to use everything you know about Excel to enter your own formulas or your own assumptions in this case for how did we come up with unavailable time now notice that the next field work time available is a calculated field so we leave it alone and we skip down to the next pink double border field where we continue entering our default data and when we click the pop-up help it tells us this is the unit of measure for both demand and production in other words what are we delivering to the customer if we were a hospital we might be delivering healthy patients and as soon as we click enter notice that everything that used to say units now says patients if we were selling go-karts everything is now in go-karts 
Again, we skip tack time because that's a calculated field, and we click the pop-up help for personal fatigue and delay, which tells us that's an estimate of real-world factors that prevent perfection. In other words, when you're out there with your stopwatch observing people, they never you go to the restroom. They never take a personal call. They never have to wait for their supervisor to fix something. In the real world, sometimes those things happen. In the United States, if you're paying piecework, that has to be at least a one point Point two factor. If that's just too complex of a concept for your people to wrap their minds around, you can enter the number 1 or leave it blank and then simply hide that row. We think that's a really bad idea, but this is your template that you use to analyze your standard work in your preferred ways. And now we skip a whole bunch of calculated fields that we'll come back to after we've entered our data and we're ready to start analyzing this process. And we come to the next pink field where we enter our default data, and that is for batch size, which is the usual number of items processed before you need setup or changeover. Again, if this were a hospital, you'd probably process one patient at a time. And then let's scroll down to the final pink cell where we enter our default data, and that is for quantity per run cycle. Again, if you're a hospital, then this makes no sense. Just hide that row. But if you are working on a machine that makes 10 units at a time, you're going to really appreciate this cell. If you happen to be working on three machines and they all make different quantities, then you, again, might use the custom formula safe zone to explain where did you come up with that crazy number that you enter here. And while we're down here at the bottom of the document, let's point out this user defined section that you can usually hide if you're not using it. And you can optionally use to insert unlimited rows, perhaps for your six approval signatures that are needed, or perhaps for risk analysis, or perhaps for extensive cost analysis using everything you know about Excel in a way that your personalizations are automatically found and transferred every time that you upgrade your templates in the future. But usually not. Usually you scroll up and simply fill in data for those header fields at the top of the page. And as we pointed out at the beginning of this video, hopefully your leaders already personalize your header fields to capture only the data that's relevant to your company. And there you go. You've now done the prep work that should be done before you get started, and you've entered your default data in units of measure. And now you're ready to enter your time observations, which is the subject of the next video.